Hello world, Darren Martino here from Master Magic Shop. And in this video, I'm going to do an in-depth review on one of my favorite books, and that is Scarney on Card Tricks from 1950. Now, let's talk about Scarney. John Scarney, uh, at one point, was like uh, the Darwin Ortiz of his era. He was a magician, and he was uh, card sharp. And uh, he's also was in 1973, the movie, The Sting, he doubled as uh, Paul Newman's hands. Um, you can watch the movie and see that. Uh, so this is one of the hidden gems. And what I like to do is research magic uh, a lot and find the hidden treasures or the gems of magic. So talking about John Scarney a little bit, um, he was hired by different uh, companies and even by the, uh, the United States military to uh, teach the, uh, the soldiers to be aware of, you know, in their travels of uh, card cheating and, and showing card cheating techniques, different things like this. But in the Scarnion, uh, Scarnion uh, card tricks, in this particular one, so he's the author of uh, 28 books. And also creative creator of games. Uh, we could do a whole history on him, but I'm going to do that for another video. But there is an effect that he was famous for, which is called the Scarney Aces. He could take a shuffled deck of cards, an unopened pack, and you have to understand the conditions. The deck is borrowed and it's unopened. The spectator opens it, shuffles it, and then he could cut right to the aces. Now I've seen a lot of magicians. Uh, on YouTube and elsewhere that are claiming that they have a method to the Scarnia and Aces. And it's just ridiculous because it's not. Yeah, they can recreate a pseudo effect, but that's not it. The closest one that I've seen to do the real work is Jack Carpenter. So look up Jack Carpenter on YouTube. Uh, he has many versions. Uh, there's something called the Zero Cole. Uh, there's a Stevens Cole, which apparently David Ben has a written book on it or something like that. But yes, you can use a pencil on the edges. Yes, you can use dirty cards. Yes, you can use a breather crimp. That's not the method. That's not. Because when you look at the conditions, it's a borrowed, unopened pack of cards, shuffled. And of course, you can do calls and different things. But the closest one I've seen is Jack and Carpenter, like I said. So look him up. He's got many awesome versions of the Scarniasis. So we're going to do a countdown about uh, 15 or 16 effects. So we're going to do about six or more effects of uh, honorable mentions. So we're going to start off with uh, the uh, double prediction by Bill Simon. Now, this has also been known as a business card prophecy. And um, I have many effects. Peter Kane has something called Swindle Slice. What I'm doing is I'm going through magic literature and I'm extracting out the best effects and routines and I'm creating based on that and I put them on video because a lot of times especially for the beginner it's very hard to learn uh, magic or card magic just because trying to learn from a book can be hard and I understand it I get it because some people you know they have a problem where they don't like to read or they have some kind of uh, limitation you know where they 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 hate reading or they they can't they can read, but they just don't like to, or whatever it is. And I get it. That's why I'm putting everything on video. Okay. I'm taking the best magic and putting it on video. So a lot of these things that I'm going to talk about here, eventually I'll have all of them into my products and my systems. They'll be absorbed into that. Right now I have many of them already on video. So we're going to talk about that. So the first effect is, uh, like I said, double prediction. The next effect we're going to talk about is we're gonna make some honorable mentions. Uh, Stuart James mirror skill. Um, another one is uh, perfect prediction. I've done a video performance on that. A lot of these I'll do performances on. Eventually I'll get uh, all of the best ones on uh, into products and on video, okay? The perfect prediction by Chester Morris. Chester Morris, I did some research on him. Now, if there's any of you that are into magic history, I'd like you to join my Facebook group on magic history where we really go in depth. I have friends uh, that are world-class magic history 
uh, experts, uh, Richard Hatch, Jason Porter, many others. And we're really gonna we're really gonna find out these. See, some people they just don't like magic history. Maybe they don't have the patience to do the research. I get it. You know, they don't want to become a magic historian. I think it's very important to understand magic history, and within that, you find the secrets. A lot of them are available in the public domain. But what I'm what I'm getting at is that's where you find a lot of the treasures when you're when you're looking through this with magic from a lot of the older material. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's good, as we're going to find out. You can modernize it, etc. So the next effect I want to mention, I said was a perfect prediction. I've done a video performance with my wife on that. And that's by Chester Morris. And this is in Scarney on Card Tricks from 1950. So Scarney was the author of, like I said, of 28 books. So Chester Morris, I did some research. He was actually a magician and an actor. And he actually exposed some magic in a popular mechanics and almost got kicked out of the SAM. But I really like that effect. I like that effect. Uh, the next one is the Vernon's Three Card Assembly by Di Vernon and Carmen D'Amico. That's really clever. Um, another honorable mentions are um, The Card on the Wall, and there's different variations uh, by Johnny Paul, Howard Thurston. Okay, so we're going to get into this. Now we're going to talk about. Um, Flighty Aces. Flighty Aces by Lou Brent is, uh, this is really awesome. So what you do is you, you take out the four aces and you set them down face up on the table. You then uh, deal through the cards as if you were dealing poker and you're going to deal three cards on each. And then what happens is you have the spectator freely select any ace, club, clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds, anyone they want. Then you take that and with the three different cards and you seal an envelope and you mark it one on the outside of the envelope and you have them sign it. And this is the effect, okay? They hold on to it. You then take all the rest of the aces are gathered up and they're shown, the aces are there. There's no McDonald's aces, anything like that. So you have the three different cards and the aces are were face up on the table. So the three different cards were face down. You stack them into a pile. You put that in an envelope, you mark number two on it, and you have them sign it. So they sign the envelopes. The envelopes are in full view. You then uh, make the magical gestures, snap your fingers, whatever you want to do. They open the envelopes that were sealed by them, and you've caused uh, the four aces to travel into the ace that they named. So now they had where there was the three different cards, they have the four aces sealed in the envelope and the signed envelope. And then in the other signed envelope where the aces were, there's now all in different cards. So this is something I think it's been overlooked. Uh, I'm definitely going to be working on modern variations of these. Okay, so that's called flighty aces. Uh, next one, which I've done in one of my projects, if you look at myself working uh, card series. Right now I have about eight volumes, but it just keeps climbing. Um, I create magic every day and every week. And I mean, practically every day. If you really want to get into this, you need to really study. If you want to be a master magician, you need to really work at it. It takes work, okay? Hard work and working smart. So that's what these videos are going to be about. In your journey of magic, I'm going to help you to discover the best magic. So the next one is, uh, like I mentioned, I've done this on video. <laughs> Excuse me. It's called uh, Wild Bill Hickok's Dead Man's Hand, created by Henry Christ. And I also found this book in uh, The Living End by uh, J.G. J. G. Thompson, Jr. Uh, J.G. Thompson has some great books as well. I uh, have a lot of his books as well. And I'll be doing book reviews on those as well. So the next one. Uh, so that's number 10. Number nine is The Future Deck by Jack Vosberg. This was used in the Michael Mars uh, Easy to Master Card Miracle series. Um, if you have those, you can find it in there. And that's a really awesome effect. And the next one, number eight, is the Topsy Turvy Deck. I have new modern variations of this. Uh, the Topsy Turvy Deck is the cards... Well, I've done a I've done a video on that. You can look on my channel on that. But I have a new one that's much better. Cause see, I'm constantly up upgrading everything, right? 
the next one, I've done a video on this performance. It's called Magic in Your Hands by Cliff Green. So that one I'll put at number seven. Now these are mine. This, these are my top 10. You know, I mentioned about 16 effects here. Those are uh, honorable mentions, like I said. But it's going to be different for everybody. But I'm really digging through this material. So uh, you can go through and you can find there's even a lot more in there as well that may be favorite to you. Like if you like more of the gambling type of routines. I prefer more of the mag magical type routines and visual kind of magic. Uh, these This book has 155 self-working card miracles in it so if you want to get it click on the link and it's really going to help your magic to the next level uh the next one so the topsy turvy deck i've done a video on that so look on my channel uh right here and you'll find that um number seven magic in your hands by cliff green i said that the next one number six uh the weagle aces now a lot of magicians are doing this wrong you know this is the, the, the self-working ace production. But if you want the real version, well, I've done a video on this. So look at my channel here and you can see that it's called the Weagle Aces. Okay. If you want the secret to that, um, I have it in my self-working card uh, trick series on video. Uh, the next one, number five is the card clock. And I've done a video on that. Okay. I've done a video on most of these, but eventually I'll get everything. Uh, this is created by Bill Pawson and Howard uh, Wurst, and this is a different version of the card clock. Now, the card clock, the card clock, there are many versions, and I have many versions. I've even created a product where I take a lot of the best versions. Of course, I'm constantly working on new versions of this as well, uh, but I have a product where you can learn, you know, the origins of the card clock, uh, uh, overkill. This card clock is a little different. I've done a video performance, like I said. You can check that out here on my channel. Now, uh, the next one is by George Stark, and that's number four, and that's a quadruple coincidence. And this is kind of a two for one because you get a do as I do effect, which is very strong self working card magic. And you get uh, another effect where the cards are cut and the cards are counted. You have the same amount of cards in it, and it's a quadruple coincidence. It's a really nice uh self-working effect the next one number three is uh by stuart james and it's the james miracle now the james miracle i'll be doing a video performance of that very soon um i do have the explanation and i have that um in my you look on my website and my self-working card volumes uh i have right now i think eight and i'm i'm uh, growing those every week and every month. So number two, number two of my favorite tricks in this book is the Stubborn Card by Bob Plummer. Now there's about three different variations of this in the book, but what I've done is I've created uh, my own, combining the best elements of those and with some other things. And I'll be putting that out as a product by itself. And it also, I have, I will have, uh, performance video of that and I will have um, in the future and I will have that for sale on my website in a it's a self-working card trick but I've done some things to it that take it to a whole nother level so what the effect is is it's a behind the back triumph with a packet of face up and face down cards um, the cards are shuffled face up and face down and then you have them cut and select a card and then they they cut the deck as many times as they want they lose it you take the cards behind the back, your back can be turned. You have the packet of face up and face down cards behind your back. And you say, I'm gonna try and find this, you know, without looking at all. Then you bring it out and you spread out the cards and the cards are unmixed and you find the selection. It's a beautiful piece. But what I've done is I've taken it several steps further, which I will be putting out very soon. Okay, that's the stubborn card by Bob Hummer, number two. Number one, a lot of people are gonna be like, ah, that's number one. Yes, it is. And I'm going to talk about why. Um, a lot of the people that are associated with this book, let's just mention some of those people. Um, you have, of course, John Scarney. And I want to mention, which I failed to mention, but I want to mention now that his mentor was uh, Leipzig, Nate Leipzig. Um, then you have a lot of people in the book that have contributed magic. And that's uh, Ted Anman, Dunninger, Cardini, Francis Carlyle, uh, Di Vernon, Thurston, Tricks of Harry Houdini, uh, Harry Blackstone. Um, I want to mention 
some of the other names that are associated with the tricks in this book. Um, so you have uh, Bob Hummer, like we said, Charles Jordan. Another honorable mention would be a trick called Double Prediction by Charles Jordan. There's a variation in here, which is called Up and Down, which is Di Vernon's uh, self-working uh, trick based on Charles Jordan's uh, Double Prediction, um, which there was no credit, which I thought was kind of interesting. There was no credit on that. I'm not saying Di Vernon wouldn't credit him, but there was no credit in that. But the tricks are very similar. They're only different in that you don't write down the prediction, you just use the cards and slightly different. But anyway, the point being, uh, we've got Martin Gardner tricks in here. We've got tricks from uh, another honorable mention would be the magic math, the magic number trick by Jack Miller. Uh, there's a lot of Oscar Weigel personification, a lot of different tricks in here. Uh, Ted Admin, Bill Seinman, many effects in here. You've got uh, you've got tricks from uh, like we said, Di Vernon, uh, Jack McMillan, Nate Leipzig, John Mulholland, Francis Carlyle. Uh, the list goes on and on. So it's too many to mention, but there's 155 tricks in this book. Uh, so if you want to get the book, click on the link. But now that brings us to the number one. Now, a lot of the people are going to be thinking, yeah, that's number one. Well, we have to think in terms of commercial to the layman and not for magicians because magicians are impressed with different things. But I have used this. I've used this for many celebrities and shows that I've done in the past. I performed it for Joe Montana many years ago. And that is the card on the ceiling. Okay. Now this shows uh, the card on the ceiling. It credits to Harry Houdini, Thurston, Blackstone, Max Molini, and Carl Rossini. So a lot of these world's greatest magicians have done this effect. In the book, it also has variations. Um, there's about four variations. There's two variations of the card on the ceiling, and then the card on the wall, which is by Johnny Paul. So that's. The review, click on the link and get this book. Thank you very much.